Welcome back. You're still watching Ways. And remember, you can join the conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways Show Africa 1 with the hashtag Ways. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp message to 081 8038463. Now, coronavirus is all over the place. There's a lot of misinformation. And, you know, according to the research I was reading, this misinformation is worse than a virus. It eats deep into the very fiber of people and it causes a lot of panic and, you know, anxiety. and fear, anxiety, and all of that. So, and it sticks more than truth. The misinformed person mm -hmm, mm -hmm. would hold on to that misinformation more than the person would hold on to. Even if they eventually bring some facts to the person, the person will still stick to that um, misinformation. misinformation. And with our parents, according to Dell's question, why or how do we stop, tell our parents that these things, some of these things are not real? Okay, so I think I'll use my parents um, <laughs> as an example because Thank God. <laughs> because they're not the only one. The same world. thing happens, right? And mm -hmm. my mom sends a broadcast, then my dad sends a broadcast, and the they are sending the same broadcast the same, <laughs> in in a space in a matter of minutes, in in a matter of minutes, right? Yeah. But I've I I found that you know because of how knowledgeable I am about this this topic, mm. so I asked them, okay, can we read? This information. Together, yes. Read it. So they read it. I'm like, okay, what part of it makes sense to you? Um, I'm not really sure again. It's better to you be see? safe than to so, be sorry. So if you had taken two minutes to read this that's broadcast, the pause. right? That's the stop, right? Stop. Look at what you're reading. Does it make sense? Typically, the headline would always be sensational. Very sensational. It's very. Catchy. You know, it's, it's that shock value mm. that, you know, news <laughs> information has, right? And by the time I took them through that like a couple of times, they, they were... Didn't do it again. They weren't so eager to send anything to me again <laughs> because they've seen that, look, he will actually make me read this thing. Okay. And when I read it and I find out that you, this not, it doesn't actually make sense, then okay. they start to feel embarrassed a bit. Okay, you, know? you were so, able to do this with your folks, but um, a lot of people will not, will not be able to do that with mm. um, older folks or individuals out there that are not as enlightened and educated. So how do we protect the populace from fake news? How do we Okay, do that? so in terms of populating the populace, first of all, the pop, the, I mean, most Nigerians are illiterate. That's the, that's the truth. So you would first have to educate the population before they can even be, become media literates, right? They need to be able to read and write before they can now know how to discern, you know, but fake news. But there are some news. educated illiterates in no, I, no, I agree. Well, no, 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 no. I agree. I agree and, completely with you. And that education those, plays a mm, huge role. It does. It yeah. does. It does. Yeah, it go does. Ahead. So for even the educated illiterates, like you mm -hmm. said, right? My parents, unfortunately, I'm sorry, I didn't were say in that category <laughs> before they saw the light, yes. right? And that was because I took time to like, hey, look, break it down. Read to this them. thing. Let's discuss it after you're done reading it. If it makes sense afterwards, then that's fine. You can send me anything that you see. But if we read it and this thing doesn't really make sense, and we can even check online. You watch the news all the time, right? Yes. Are they saying this on the news? If not, then clearly it might not be true, right? So I think it's just having to be deliberate about letting them understand the importance of stop. So we have a fast pace. Mm. Uh, what's it called, information ecosystem right now. And our brain is constantly jumping from one Facebook post to an Instagram post to a Twitter post, you know, in a matter of seconds. You're clicking and you're absorbing a lot of information. And this, you know, is a very fertile ground for, what's it called, for fake news to thrive, right? How do we get people, because I believe in that deep post, take a, take a breather. And so how do we start to get people you know, to take a deep pause, or are we, so now, let me take N Nigeria for instance, maybe because of years and years of disappointment from our leadership, so every little time that there is something sensational about the leadership of Nigeria, it goes so viral. It escalated. Do you understand, it's escalated, maybe because of where we've been. So how do we start to get people to heal from the pain of, you know, <laughs> oh, you know, of misinformation over the years that now they have they are now stuck in that realm. Okay, so I mean, Nigerians have every right to mistrust their governments. I mean, the facts are overwhelming. The facts about how you know we voted governments into power and they've disappointed us time and time again, right? We've, we've, we've been independent for over fifty years and still 
basic infrastructure, we're still having those kind of discussions when you know, um, other African nations are, have moved on. So for you to win back the confidence of Nigerians, you will need to show evidence why they should trust you. And what that means is that when you make a campaign promise, you need to fulfill it. If you don't fulfill it, then definitely there's no way they will trust you when you come and say something. So I think as a nation, right, if we're going to start to second guess bad news when we see it, that's because maybe the government has given us reasons why we should trust them and you know, why we should look at the information and like, no, uh, my government cannot do this or my governor cannot do this or, exactly. my, or my local government chairman cannot do this because I have seen time and time again where he has said something. So we're saying we should, they should build their integrity question with Absolutely. us. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. So um, Ede says, how do we fact check? numerous messages that is flying around on WhatsApp. Is there somewhere we can always use to check? Apart from reading, mm. it, are there places, you mentioned Google, mm. right? So are there other places, is there a, um, like I, I know there's a website I, uh, I have learned recently, I think Budget, okay. anytime you want to get figures and numbers and all of oh, that, yeah. you can go there and check with, they give actual figures mm. and, and um, data. they have the correct data, yes, on information. So is there something like that? Okay, so, of, um, um, fake so I'll just say that, first of all, you need to read the information. Um, you need to read it. You need to digest it. You know, does it make sense, you know, before you even go any further? Now, after reading it, you also have to check other reputable news agencies, right? For something like coronavirus, you have the NCDC, who is the, the, the approved body that is handling this matter. So if there's any information around that topic, it should be the NCDC that I should be talking uh, about WHO? or talking to or WHO. WHO. The WhatsApp is so right? efficient. I'm telling Good. you. And, and yes. So any information, and luckily these guys are, they have a presence everywhere on social media. They're on Twitter, they're on Instagram, they're on Facebook. So, I mean, it's easy to actually go to their page and just find out, look, okay, you say 10 people have died. What did NCDC say about this thing? So what and if they said, okay, five people died in, um, so just killed 50 people in um, Ikorodu, another sect of people were um, manhandled in um, Okota or um, Isolo. Mm. How do you verify that information? So some, a station like Plus TV will definitely have that news mm. because that is your responsibility to society, which is to inform society of the real thing that is happening. Absolutely. So if... Plus TV doesn't have that information, S channels doesn't have that information, AIT doesn't have that information, then clearly something is wrong. Because these are the guys whose responsibilities it is to actually go looking for information to inform the populace. So I think before anybody should you know, believe anything that they're reading, they need to go to this. You know, for the, for, because I've, I've seen mainstream, uh, what's it called, print media actually make certain blunders. Mm. Because of course, they want to do the first person to report that mm. news. Mm -hmm. Like, yes. I broke that news mm -hmm. first. Yes. And you fall victim of, um, of, um, of um, peddling fake news. Mm. So that, that one happens sometimes. Sometimes, so Sometimes even the mainstream media you're talking about, they, they are not really, really credible. Um, Ruth says, I had to tell my parents strongly to stop sharing <laughs> messages on our family group. group. You know what I do now? Let me tell you the number one cure for fake news. Once you see it on your WhatsApp, swipe right. There are three dots there. Click it and delete, delete. the chat. So what I have done, I have my numbers on my phone. I mean, I know almost everybody I saved. I saved them on my mm. phone. So there are some people that are not in that bro broadcasting um, habit. habit. Mm -hmm. So when they send me a message, I take my time to go through it, to read those messages. I have one of my very good um, friends, I call him, he's a coach to me, our DJ. Whenever he sends anything, I read it. Why? Because I know there is a he level is of credible not... What's it called? No, what's that word? He's, he's disciplined, okay. Okay. right? With his sending. Messages. His messages. He's very disciplined. He's not, he, he doesn't just go around sharing messages. Mm. So you must have some credible people on your contact list mm. that don't go about forwarding every Everything message they see. They see. Mm. So for me, the, the way to keep my sanity, I see the person sending it. I write, click, uh, just swipe right. Three dots, hit it, <laughs> and I delete the chat. I, I don't even I bother to open. You know why? Because you are telling me to read. Come on. Have you seen some of this write-up? <laughs> so they long. are so lengthy. How can I waste my 
my time. Five minutes of and your life. Yeah. Okay, so let me just say something. You know, something, you know, in, in the course of having this conversation around fake news, I found out that people who even share this, you know, fake broadcasts regularly, they are actually exposing themselves to fraudsters. Because when people know that you are gullible and you can believe anything, trust me, you just make yourself a target. So you find that even in, in, in groups, right, in WhatsApp groups, not everybody in those groups has a positive Interact. intention for being in that group. Absolutely. Mm. People are there for their own selfish interests. So I think for people who are used to sending that kind of information, you need to watch it. Because you are exposing yourself to people that will see that, oh, this one, he can believe anything or she can believe anything. And we have so many questions today. So someone mm. says, hello, this is from Dupe. Um, we also have bloggers who peddle fake news, which could cause a triple effect. How do we curb this? Now, that is another stream of media because mm. a lot of people go to different kinds of blogs. I remember they had to pull down certain blogs at some point yes. for peddling fake, fake news. news. So how do we curb that? Okay, so, um, I mean, blogs would always be there. I mean, they have a market that they service, right? And if you, I mean, generally, they, they would usually report news on, you know, entertainment, on gossip, and things like that. If you're looking for <laughs> real <Spicy>. information, information <laughs> you shouldn't be going to those kind of places to yes. get that kind of information. If you're trying to find out how many people have died by I this mean, virus. How many people kissed uh, our president? Yeah, you I mean, you can go our... there. That's fine. You can actually go Spicy there because kids. really they serve a market. Yeah. You yes. know, they, serve, they have their own audience. Mm -hmm. But if you're, if you're a serious-minded person and you're looking for serious information, serious news, you need to go to where you can okay, find Okay, so let's them. bring it down. Let's bring it home. So have you been a victim of fake news? Hmm, I don't think so. I don't think so. Maybe because I, I have a healthy... Um, those of skepticism Style. when I okay. read any information. <laughs> so I'm a bit, I think I suspect the information first before, before I actually consume it. So even, uh, even if I'm reading it, I'm kind of like, mm, so where's the truth here? I'm just going through it. Where's the truth here? And mm -hmm. before I now accept that, okay, okay this so let me true. now add another question to that. Has any, has any um, information about you, I mean, uh, has anybody misinformed people about who you are? And if yes, how did you handle it? Uh, no, I haven't had that. Uh, oh, really? Uh, no, I haven't. You've had a good, very clean. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think I've been fortunate. Another thing. <laughs> There's also another thing that is, um, we should also call to mind here. They said in every rumor, there is an element of truth. So sometimes maybe this fake news also has some sort or of... Or is exaggerated? Because even, even the COVID currently, um, we have the issue of uh, um, people bringing up different types of... Um, Cures. Uh, cures. Mm. And <laughs> so our Oni of Ife is that recently did something truth. about, I think, onions and some herbs, our mm. local herbs yes. and all of that. Would you consider that mm -hmm. fake news? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll give an example. You know, I was on, on, on the news some, some days ago. I would give you that as a tough question. Is it a yes or a no? No, 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 because I know because I think I have to relate it to something. Okay. Yeah. Right? And I was on the news some days ago and you know the question came up as to Trump gave a pronunciation about <laughs> chloroquine. chloroquine. Right? And my response to that question was that he's not a medical professional. I would not take advice from somebody from medical advice from someone who's not a medical professional that is just not wise regardless of who this person is mm -hmm. right and we are all human beings people in the bid to want to protect other people might make mistakes yes. so i mean i think if you want to get news about real estate you need to go to a real estate developer exactly. if you want to get news about health you need to go to a medical, medical expert yes that's just you know how what it how, is. yeah that's, okay that's so how finally I someone that. says please what <laughs> of the scenarios when the government actually goofed and upon realization they come out claiming either accounts were hacked or the stories are all fake after they must have deleted the content because truly the government are um, lying, lying lords. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't heard that one before. I didn't say that too. Please let me look for the person's name. The person they put their name anonymous, okay. okay. Uh, anonymous. So sometimes our government actually come out and instead of saying, admitting to um, falsehood, they, they now make claims like, oh, my account was hacked and all of that. Well, I mean, I mean yeah, how I mean, do you handle those kind of people? It's, it's quite unfortunate. And it's so bad that someone who read that information might not be the same person to read the retraction. Absolutely. So they're not even 
you know, given the, the, the opportunity to know that this thing is actually fake, and they just run with the first. So I think it's, it's unfortunate that those kind of things happen, but they shouldn't be happening. So what would you give as advice, especially to young people like us, you know, come, we are all over on social media. If they say, I mean, you know how I know that there's a challenge going on? Because once they say one challenge, like everybody jump on Jumps that bandwagon mm. and all of that. And we are constantly soaking up a lot of information, information. right? So is that healthy for us? What, would you, what advice would you give to all the young people out there? Well, we're in the information, information age. And you know um, the amount of information, I mean, it's mind boggling. You can't really stop it. You can't slow it down. But you can filter it. You can filter it by getting it from the right source. That is, that is just the easiest way to go about it. I think another thing that young people should do is they should educate themselves more on how to spot you know, this fake news. I mean, we've already said it earlier on in the show where mm -hmm. people can, steps people can take to spot fake news. If you enlighten yourself, definitely you won't be a victim to the information that is being peddled, especially fake information out exactly. there. So it's very important. Now, these are the things that kind of you know um, informed the Yali group to actually start this stop, you know, stop, reflect, and verify campaign, you I know, which that. which we call the Yali checks um, campaign. And what that means is that basically stop and read what you've been sent. Hmm. Stop and read it, Absolutely. right? Reflect Don't on just it. just send it. Exactly. Reflect on it. Think about it. You know, does this make sense, right? Who is the person writing this thing? Hmm. And where else has this person written information? That you can go and, that check, you can go and, and check, read. check again. Absolutely. Because if this person says he's a journalist, then surely he has a track record of um, right other ups. publications that he so has actually put out. Exactly. Source. So, that, so that, that is the reflecting part. Now, the okay. verification part is where you actually go digging, fact finding to see, oh, okay, this person, you said you're a, you're a journalist, right? You wrote this. I, I can now Google your name. I can now check where you've written stuff before, and I can say, okay, fine, this Thank is actually you so a reputable much. individual to get me. Thank you. It's a, it, that's a very good way to wrap it up. <laughs> reflect. Stop. Stop. Reflect. reflect verify. Verify. Yeah. I love that. Thank you so much. There's no, nothing more to add to that. <laughs> all right, right. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank, Thank you, Isi, as well, for, Thank you. for doing this together. <laughs> all right, all you can watch pleasure. a repeat broadcast on Mondays, Saturdays, and Sundays at 3 p.m. It's been a very, very insightful conversation. It's always Thank you insightful. again. Thank you. My Please pleasure. keep a date with us on all our social media platforms uh, as we continue to hear what you are saying. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. It's okay to be honest about not knowing rather than spreading falsehood. While it's often said that honesty is the best policy, silence is the second best policy. Policy. Do you agree with that? I think so. I, uh, I think, so. <laughs> I, I, think <laughs> I, I know so. <laughs> I All right, so enjoy the rest of your evening. See you tomorrow.